<laughs> hey people, it's the Broken Puppet, and this is how to draw an old school hourglass. Enjoy. How to draw an old school hourglass. No, I literally just done this whole thing, talking the whole time, and realised I hadn't pressed record, so I'm going to do it all over again. Right, so this is what we're doing. Under. Right. So, top, bottom. All right. Let's get first off. Get yourself something round. Let's go use a cup for this. Draw yourself a circle around it. So I'm just below it, so the lines touching. Do, 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 do. Draw a line around that, like so. Draw a straight line up, touching the furthest point out on that circle, and the furthest point out on that circle. So on the other side. Like so. The rough line at the bottom. A rough line just cutting through that circle, rough line at the bottom, about the same sort of size as this, just cutting through that circle, the other sides, bringing a parallel line to that side bit, and same on the other side, like so. Now where you got these two circles, it sort of shows us where to put the actual glass. So what we're going to do is we want to bring this up and following this curve we don't want to cut through just on this sort of section just here. And now we cut through that you can see you've got this shape in this gap. Now when you're doing this bit you want to make sure it's roughly about the same sort of shape. That's your best way of sort of telling if something's symmetric. Rather than focusing on the line and seeing if you've got the line straight, if the shape is roughly the same you know you're on target. Do the same on the other side. Like so. Let me give it that. We're going to put a flower just here, so put a rough circle just here, and a rough circle just there. Obviously, this is where your glass is going to be. These are two side bits. Now we're going to start with them. Now you can have them just plain straight if you want, but to be honest, it's like you know one of your key de uh, detailing points. What I like to do: circle in the middle, circle in the middle, got oval shape just above it, got oval shape just below it. On top here, just create this curve coming outwards. Again, thin and just a bit thicker towards the top. Go out thick, go thin, out thick, go thin. Now you ain't got to use a ruler, but uh, anything like for a straight edge, you know, if you want to get it dead perfect, I'm just going to use my business card here. So I'm just going to bring in a straight line across, below that, parallel line, bring in the bottom line, and bring in a space gap, you know, roughly about the same sort of size as that top bit. Same on the top. Got line across. Line across, line across, line across, line across, and your edges. Now I'm going to quickly pen that in so you can see it all nice and clearly. Find my pen. There we go.
So you've got a circle, oval shape, oval shape, out wide, come in thin, out wide, come in thin. And a little gap here, just going to do a little semicircle, just that. I'm going to curve just into the circle and the uh, oval shape just there. Curve out and in, curve out and in, little semicircle. Just doing my same on the other side. Now you can take your time as much as you need on this, don't feel like you need to rush. I know sometimes I go through them a bit quick. But you know, you go at your own pace. in those curves like so Lines across, just lines across. basic structure for the hourglass. So now we've done that, just grab your rubber, rub all that pencil work out. And what I do is I'll shade in the outside bit and then I'll show you the hourglass in the middle. But firstly in this section here, a few things you can do, you can have this wood sort of thing, so you can have like random squeaky lines, you can have it cross hatched. You know, your idea is to make some sort of pattern work in this. So I'm going to do what I've done before for this one. I'm going to bring in semicircle shapes. Repeat them roughly the same size the whole way across. Like so. Then up the other way. At the top. Like so. Now I'm going to use my uh, markers for this, but you can use pencil, paints, watercolors, acrylics, whatever you want to use. I don't feel like you have to use markers just because I do. Just going to flick in a little bit of black, just at the top of the bottom of these columns. A little bit just over the top, a little gap in between. I might just colour these bits black. Yeah, that way it looks black. Now, when you're going for old school, neo traditional, you really want to get in the habit of using black. It's a key colour, you know, you can't really achieve that old school look if you're not willing to use pure black. Now, for markers, you know, like, you know, I usually flip my black in and I use a side to side motion. 
this works really well for watercolours. In with pencil, you know, you can just get a really good even tone. It's just stops you getting those scratchy flick marks sometimes. See that, that, that. It's coming out a lighter shade, just over the top. Then I come in with my light shade and just blend it out. Now you've got to remember with markers and water paints on this kind of paper, it's going to be wet when you first place it down, which means it's going to be darker. You need to allow for it to lighten up. So you'll see as we're probably doing this, this bit will dry it and this grey shade will go a lot lighter. As we're doing it, see, so do the side bits, top bits in the uh, top two rectangle base. Now, you can use black from the outside, I like to do it from the center for this. When it's something that's circular, I like to give this kind of hint that you've got the shadow in the middle, it just works really nice for me. So, just put some black in the center. Like in your greys on the side, and just slowly blend these out. like so. So you see you get a cool sort of shade just down the centre, which is what I quite like, quite like to do. Just rub out that pencil work. Now the centrepiece, I'm going to do like a light, uh, some light bits. So I'm going to have this curve shape just here. I'm going to break it up, so I've got a little square shape, and then drip down here. A little curve on this side. Circle bit just there. I'm going to flick in another curve shape just here. You go up, curve, flick it down. Have it so it just kind of goes to nothing in the bottom. On that side, one little bit in the middle, maybe a little bit there. Now, as for the sand, I'm going to have this coming down like this. You know, a lot of time you can do other stuff than sand. Like a lot of time I do it here, like the sand, and it goes like waves and a little ship inside or a skull or something. You know, but I'm going to do the sand you know, and leave the options open for you guys to do what you want to do. So I'm just going to create a curve bit here. I'm going to have this kind of overlap so it looks like it's kind of like dipping in the middle, which is what I want because the sand's obviously coming down. It's going to go into a little mountain of it. I'm going to have a few little sand dreamy bits just on the sides. Now, when I do that, I'm not going to use no harsh black outlines. I'm going to literally just flip the shadows in. So I might as well do that now to show you. So I'm going to come in with my light grey. I'm just going to go around that edge. Wire that box up. I'm going to leave this white highlight just all around the edge. I'm not going to touch that. Bring this up to the edge. I'm just going to flip that out. Just around that circle. Create that little space in between. But to take the shadows out to the corners. Flip that around. Flip that up. Now do it for the shadows for me. Nothing too crazy. Just getting the basics in there. I'm going to get my black. I'm just going to colour in these little spaces in between. Just 
like so. A bit, a bit neater than I am. I'm, I'm just flicking this in. Been a little bit messy today, actually. Gone over lines a few times. You know, don't sort of feel like you have to go fast with this. If I was sort of doing this like normally, like you know, for like a print or something, I would spend hours on it. You know, but obviously, because I'm just doing it for tour to for you guys. You know, I want to better show you all the key points without dragging on for ages. You know, I just want to better show you guys how to do it properly. So it's going to get like a this color. I'm going to use this to do the outline for the sand. Do a little flick bit just there for the sand dunes. It's going to flick in this corner bits just here to really separate that top layer. Just gonna flip this bit in from the sides. Like so. Dan's gonna rub out all that pencil work. I'm gonna get my yellow, I'm just gonna colour in the rest of the sand now. Kind of one of that kind of musty wet sand colour. If you're doing on normal paper, it looks good to have other colours. You, know, you can go like purple for the sands. You want to go off, you can kind of go red, girly, you can go like pink, uh, pink or purple sand. I think purple would probably be better than pink, but yeah, it's up to you. Don't feel like you have to be restricted to one colour. Just have that circle there for the highlight will do. Right, now I'm just going to colour in some of the other bits. So grab me. Um, I want this bit to be kind of like, you know, sort of wood texture. Quite grand, so I'm just going to use my brown for this. You can create like a little highlight in the middle if you want. I want to make this one solid, I think. Use the thing inside a bit. Glue in those bits of green. On normal paper, this would come out more luminous, but on this kind of paper, you get a cool grassy green effect with this pen. This one's just Pro Marker. You know, I use Pro Markers, Tree Markers, Brush Markers, uh, Wonder Newton Brush Markers. There is a whole range. Now what we're going to do here, just spread down that green. It's going to do a red outside edge. Like so. It's just creating a cool kind of pattern work. Just to make these bits a bit more interesting. And without going too crazy with the detail. Because we know it's not realistic, it's old school. So, just going to do a red circle in the centre of these bits. Just going to get some orange, going to flick this out from that grey. I'm going to have that go into yellow. So we get like a nice cool kind of gold top. Comes a bit more grey on this, but I quite like how it looks. Just doing that to fill in that little gap without touching the line. And then some 
blue. Just colour in these side bits. And then I'll do the flowers and then I'll do the highlights. Now the flower bits, we're just going to start with circle on the corner, a little circle around it. Get your pencil, sketch a wider circle around it, you know, quite fairly even. Use about to see just mark out point on the pencil and just sort of go around and just see if each bit is roughly about the same length. Now I tend to just go by look, like you know, just by looking at it. It's a bit tough at first, but you kind of get the hang of it after a while. Just divide it into whatever number you want. It's going to probably divide this one into eight. I would normally do five or six, but eight is just an easy one. Just cross, and then cross in the centre of those. Once you've got that base bit, what we're going to do is just bring that line up, curve on the line, dip up. Dip down, come down. Just do that for each bit. Curve up, dip up, come round, dip up, dip up, dip down, curve up, curve down, dip up. Now I'm being quick so it's not going to be 100% accurate but you can take your time. It's going to be a little line just coming up a little bit in the middle of these. And the same for this. Dip up, come around. Dip up, down, up, up, down. Dip up, dip down, up, dip up, dip down. Going a bit uneven on this one now. Dip up, dip down. Not perfect, but I do. It's going to do some little leaves, just like literally, just semi sort of curve and curve back. Do one, two, three there. One, two, three there. One, two. Through there. One, two, three there. What about your pencil work? And I'm just going to colour this one up here in red and that bottom one in blue. You can leave like a white edge similar to what you got there. And I think I've shown you that before. So I'll just do a bold colour in one this time. Always try to make them look a bit different. There's so many little subtle changes you can make to the old school flowers and just makes the water difference. You know, a different sort of line height, you know. Little detail line, different kind of curve, little dip in there, little semicircle, sort of like detailing, an extra circle somewhere. Do that, let's colour in a bit in yellow. some black shapes in the center just mimicking the uh, shape of the leaf just thinner it's 
just a really classic old school way of doing the leaves. Nope. Rushing that one a bit too quick. Come on the green. Covering that outside green. And these don't always have to be green as well. You can do them like, you know, orange, brown. You can have colours mixing into colours. Like so. Now what I'm going to do is just put this little um, red tint. If I can find my brush blender. Right, with the markers, easy way of doing this is with a blender. Get your fat tip, touch tip your marker, hold it there for 10 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 for this one. Make sure it's okay. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to do is just start doing this oval shape just here. Slowly coming back. Once I start seeing the colour, just keep working that back until that colour comes out solid. So what it does is it just dilutes the tip so it comes out clear and then it starts coming back into it. And as that heal as that as that heals, as that dries, that bit go clear, so you just get like a nice red faint tip. About even, just keep coming across until you start seeing that hint of colour, and then just keep working it back like so. See, then you get like this cool little old school glow. Let's get me white pencil, I'm just gonna put some white highlights now. Sharpness of touch. There you go, she did a trick. It's just a Prisma colour pencil. So I'm just going to colour in just certain key areas, nothing too major. Mainly the highlights. So that box, that circle. One here. Just flick this bit out. Come down along that edge. Just all those little areas we marked out for highlights. It's like so. I'm just going to put a little highlight just on the edge. Top bit. One, two, three, four. She did a trick. And there you go. That is how to draw an old school hourglass. I hope that's helped. Hope it is definitely recorded this time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like, comment, subscribe, yada yada yada. And a broken puppet. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.